Hello, welcome to another video. We're going to find the power series for a function, and the function is x over 2 minus 4x squared. But the key to finding any power series for a function is understanding that characteristic of a, a convergent geometric series. So the geometric series must converge and make the function you have look like a convergent geometric series and you get a power series. And while we're doing that, we need to find the center of convergence, we need to find the interval of convergence and the radius of convergence. Well, these ones are very easy when it comes to power series. You don't need to do a lot of calculations. Um, where the calculation is, there's actually not much calculations if you know what to do. So let's start by first making this look like a convergent geometric series, and then we'll get our answers. Let's get into the video. The first thing you want to do is rewrite this function. Well, what, what do you want to rewrite it to look like? Let's quickly do a, sh a short review of geometric series. Look, if I tell you that I have one and I'm adding it to something, let's say two, and then I add it to four, and then I add it to eight, and then I keep going. See, eventually the numbers are gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and it's not possible for you to add an infinite sum where you keep multiplying by a number greater than one or even one. So if you keep writing one plus one plus one plus one, well, it will increase infinitely. Well, that's what you get on a number line as you keep going. You just keep skipping ones and you keep going. So it's not possible for it to converge to a finite number. So you can't get a function if it looks like this. But if we reverse it and we say we have one half, then one fourth, then one eighth, such that the number you're using to multiply the original one and then the next one is just one half. You notice that I'm multiplying by one half every time. So what's happening is the numbers are getting smaller, right? The numbers are getting smaller. Now, it is possible for this to have a convergent form because I have a common ratio of R and that R is less than one. And if you recall your formula, uh, actually you can write this as the shorthand form of this is the sum, because this is one, remember anything raised to power zero is one, so you can assume that the common ratio, which is one half in this case, for the first one was raised to power zero. So it's as if you have r raised to power n, and you started your n from zero, and you're going to infinity. That is the shorthand form of this. And what will be the r? The common ratio for this problem is one half. So one half raised to power n is what you get in each case and adding them up is what you call the sum. So the most important thing you wanna see here is that the first term is one or you're starting from n equals zero, it doesn't matter. And secondly, the common ratio is less than one. And we have a formula that this thing you see here can actually be written out as one over one minus r. So after all said and done, it doesn't matter how many terms, as you go to infinity, you're gonna come back to this. The sum of all of these terms is gonna be one divided by one minus r. In this case, our r is one half. So the answer to this example I just showed you is one over one minus one half, which is one over one half, which is equal to two. So the sum of all these numbers, one plus one half plus one fourth plus one eighth plus one sixteenth plus one thirty two, one thirty second, as you keep going to infinity, do you know the maximum, the total you're going to get forever is just two. Okay, so that's the idea. If you know that the common ratio is less than one, you will always be able to do this math and you'll get a finite number, which is easily one over one minus the common ratio. So let's transform this to look like this, because if we can write this to look like this, then we can write this like this, and this is what we want. 
Because you see, if you can write any function like this, you can easily take the integral, you can, oh, you can differentiate, you can integrate, you can add, you can subtract, you can even divide, and you can multiply. So polynomials are easy to work with, and that's why we can easily do anything with this. If only we can see this like this, and then write it this way, because of what we know. Let's transform this into this. So I have here f of x equals x over 2 minus 4x. But remember, we want to have 1 on top and we want to have 1 here. Well, this r, anything here can be regarded as the r, but what you cannot regard as anything else is you can't say x is 1 and you can't say 2 is 1, but because r is not specifically defined, you can modify this part. So what we're going to do is say this expression can be, I'm going to move, I'm going to write this as x times 1, okay? And I'm going to write this because I want this to be 1, I can divide it by 2 by factoring out a 2 from the bottom and I'm going to have 1 here minus, if you factor out 2 from both of this, you're going to get 2x squared. So now we can say this function can be written as x over 2 multiplied by 1 over 1 minus 2x squared. And guess what? This is the guy we're looking for, this guy here. That is what looks like our 1 over 1 minus r for our geometric series that converges. And remember, this we can say converges as long as 2x squared is less than 1. Okay? That's the rule for geometric series that, conver geometric series that converges. So we have to say, therefore, let r be equal to 2x squared. And because r must be less than 1, this implies that 2x squared, the absolute value, actually that's the rule, is less than 1. If the absolute value of 2x squared is less than 1, what does it tell us? Well, it tells us many things. And let's start answering the questions now that we've identified what r is. This is the key to everything we're doing. Identifying what the radius of convergence is not radius of convergence, identifying what the r is if it was a geometric series. So this is our r, and then we have to go answer these questions. So the first question is, let's call it 1, that 2x squared can be written as 2 times x minus 0 squared. So since there is 0 here, which is the general way of finding your center of convergence is whatever number is being added or subtracted to x, uh, subtracted from x in this in this case um, would be what you pick as your center of convergence so if it was x minus 1 then you say 1 is the center of convergence if it was x plus 2 then you say minus 2 is the center of convergence so in this case our center center of convergence is 0 Okay, that's our center of convergence. Go to the second part. Now, for interval of convergence, you want to know how far you're going to go away from zero so that this thing we're trying to do is true. Because if you go too far away from zero, then you're not going to have 2x squared being less than 1. Remember, 2x squared has to be less than 1. This has to be true for you to have any form of convergence. So all you have to do is solve this inequality. We're going to say that 2x squared is less than 1. Usually it's the absolute value, but I don't need to write that now because um, what I have is 2x squared. I'm still going to have an absolute value coming from here. So you have x squared is less than 1 half, divide both sides by 2. If you take the square root of both sides, then you get the absolute value of x is less than, what's the square root of this? That's 1 over square root of 2, or square root of 1 over 2, which is the same thing as this, which means that the interval of convergence is from negative 1 over square root of 2, is less than x, and x is less than 1 over the square root of 2. This is what you call your interval of convergence, and you can write it this way, negative 1 over root 2, comma 1 over root 2, in interval notation. And finally, the third one is our radius, radius of convergence. Make a sketch of this. Let's say this is it. This is the picture. So you have this. You're going to go as far as this, as far as this on the left. So this is 1 over square root of 2. This minus 1 over square root of 2. The middle is 0. So clearly, this is your radius. Your radius is this distance, okay? Which is just 1 over square root of 2. So that's your radius. It's going to be r is equal to 
1 over square root of 2. So we have all the answers, 1, 2, and 3 answered. So what else are we looking for? We are looking for the power series itself, which is easy. All you have to do, remember, we have transformed this function to look like this. And we say with all these conditions we have established, this is the R. So we can say that f of x will be equal to um, x over 2 multiplied by this. But this can be written as a power series, n equals 0 to infinity of, this is the radius, 2x squared. So you just say 2x squared raised to power n. And that's it. So you notice you don't have to do anything extra because this is the hardest work you need to do. And then doing all these little calculations to explain why it is justified. And then you go here and say, my function is this multiplied by what looks like a convergent geometric series, the sum of a, an infinite series. And this is what you have. Start from n equals zero to infinity. And then remember, if you start from zero, the first term is gonna be one, right? The next term is gonna be two x squared. The next term is gonna be four x to the fourth and you keep going like that so this is what you have we can actually now move this guy inside so let's rewrite this this is the same thing as um, the sum from n equals zero to infinity if we move this guy in it becomes x over two multiplied by if you split this it's going to be two to the n and this is going to be x to the two n well let's combine x with this Combine this with this. Well, 2 to the n divided by 2 is going to be 2 to the n minus 1. So we can write this as the sum. n equals 0 to infinity. Combine the x's, you're going to have um, x to the 2n plus 1. And if you combine the 2's, it's going to be 2 to the n minus 1. And this is the infinite series for f of x the power series rather. I hope you learned something. Never stop learning, because those who stop learning have simply stopped living. Bye-bye.